this one I'm going to cover dependency injection. Dependency injection is a technique where one object supplies dependencies to another in order to avoid hard coding those dependencies. This allows for loosely coupled code which is easy to scale, maintain and test. Before we get started let me just say that I record in high resolution so don't watch on a blurry screen, choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. I've got a new project going called Design Patterns and I'm going to compose a require PHP unit. So I've got testing capability and it'll also give me the uh, composer auto loader, which is going to really help. Okay, inside my design patterns folder, I've created another folder called public, and in there, just a PHP file called dependency injection. At the top level, I'm also creating a folder called source src, and what I want to do is map an app namespace to that source folder. So in my composer JSON file, I create an auto load key specifying PSR4 and then app, a couple of backslashes, colon, SRC, and then we'll map any uh, classes which we put in the SRC folder to the app namespace. And so let's create one. I'm just going to call this random processor. So it's just an example of a class which will carry out maybe a big long process. And as part of that process, it's going to be required to write some data to a file. And in order to write that data to a file, it's going to depend on a file writing service class. And so I've got a process method here. It takes an array of data. And so I'm just sketching in a couple of steps here. Try to write to a file and then continue processing. So we're not really concerned with the continue processing bit. That's just a bit of let's pretend. But we use the file writing part of the process to demonstrate the difference between hard coding and dependency injection loose coupling. So here I've created a class called CSV FileWriter and its sole responsibility is to write the contents of a array of data to a CSV file. Obviously we're not gonna do that, we're just gonna pretend that we're writing to the file. But what I'm illustrating here is that it's something which could be quite lengthy. So I'll call a sleep function here and I'll pass in two which will pause the program for two seconds. That's just to illustrate the time it might take to write some contents to a file and then I'm going to return true from here. Really just for the sake of returning something. Back in our random processor, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hard code an instantiation of a CSV file writer. Have a little think about why that might be a bad idea. Think about things like scaling and also the future of this application. In the meantime, we'll just carry on with the process. So result equals file writer write to file. And then that's going to return a boolean. So I'll just drop in a little exception if that returns a false. And then what we want to do is just continue processing. So rather than add a load of code here, I'm just going to print out a line of text to indicate that the program is expected to continue processing something or other. And then again, I'm going to return a boolean just for the sake of returning something really. Before I go into explaining the problem with this code in any depth, let's just add some client code and call this uh, process method and just make sure that everything is working okay for us. So I'm going to require the vendor autoload file and then processor equals new random processor and then processor process and we'll just pass a simple little array foo bar before this runs what i'm going to actually need to do is dump auto load so composer dump auto load and then that will create that mapping between my app namespace and my source folder and then php public dependency injection so writing to csv you get that two second pause while it's writing to the file and then it continues processing so now let's take a minute to have a look at this code here and discuss what the problem is as you can see i've hard coded the instantiation of the csv file writer how easy is this to maintain and will it scale what if i wanted to write to different types of files xml json whatever it means that this code will actually have to change. Would I need to create a process CSV method and also have a separate process JSON method? 
And if I was to rename the method, how many parts of my code would I have to go looking in in order to change it? This processor class is now tightly coupled to the CSV file writer, and that's bad. Let's go and look at a different way that we can do this. So in my source folder, I'm going to create a new class, and I shall call this simply file writer. And this will be an abstract class, so you'll never directly instantiate a file writer. Instead, you'll extend it with child file writers which have a specific purpose, such as CSV file writer. I'm adding an abstract public function, write to file, which means that any child class must also implement that method. In my random processor, I'm creating a constructor, and in the constructor, I'm going to inject the file writer. There are different kinds of injection. This is called constructor injection. So when you instantiate a random processor, you must also pass into the constructor an instance of file writer. And as you can see, I'm using that to set a file writer property on the class. You can also use a setter method to do the same thing. That's called setter injection, but we'll stick with constructor injection. In my CSV file writer class, I'm gonna extend file writer as you can see, I'm already implementing the write to file method, which is mandatory when we extend the file writer. And now to complete the dependency injection process, I just need to remove this hard coded instantiation of the CSV file writer. And instead I'm gonna use this file writer, which gets passed in through the constructor. And believe it or not, with those simple steps, we've made our code a lot more flexible and a lot easier to maintain. Let's go and try this out and you'll see that it works exactly the same. All we need to do is just create a file writer in our client code, pass that in to the constructor of the random processor, run the code again. So it writes to the file and then continues processing. I'm now going to add capability to write to a JSON file. Before I do this, have a think, how much of this random processor class, how much of the code do you think I'll have to change in order to add that capability? Okay, so in the source folder, I've created a file called JSON file writer. I'm just gonna paste in the code from the CSV and just change this to indicate that we are actually writing to a JSON file and not a CSV file. And then I'll go over to the dependency injection file I'm just going to change this to JSON file writer. I'm injecting the same uh, file writer object there. Run the code, write into JSON file, continue processing. In fact, I didn't touch any code in the random processor. So how maintainable is that? Zero maintenance and it scales automatically. If that doesn't convince you to use dependency injection, nothing will. There's one last benefit which we need to cover and that is the testability of your code. So I'm gonna create a test folder here. The loosening of dependencies will improve the testability. It'll make your code so much easier to test because you can replace dependencies with test doubles. And that means that long processes like writing to files, sending emails, etc., you can bypass that functionality and just focus your test on the thing that you are testing. For example, in my test scenario here, all I want to test is that the process method of the random processor is going to return a true value. The writing of records to a file has no bearing on whether the process method is gonna return true or false. So is it really something which needs to be included in the test because writing to a file can be quite a lengthy process, things like that, sending emails, these are things which you want to try and avoid in your test. Unless, of course, you're testing that you can write to a file, but that is something which you would do specifically. So follow along with me. I've done the setup here. I've created a JSON file writer, injected it into the random processor, and then I've called the process method on the processor. And like I say, I'm just asserting that I get a true result. Okay, so PHP vendor bin php unit and then tests and then i called it random processor test i'm just going to put a colors option on there okay so my test ran 
but it took the two seconds because it did that part where it writes to the file and as we said we pause the program for two seconds there to imitate writing to a file. You need to try and keep your test times down to a minimum because as your application grows those test times are going to grow and if you've got big unwieldy processes like writing to a file etc it's only going to add to the overhead. So really I want to avoid this write to file method. I can do that now because my system's loosely coupled. I'm using dependency injection, which means I can inject a mock into the random processor rather than a real JSON file writer. So I covered PHP unit mock objects in part one of the course, but here's a little reminder. To create the mock, we do this create mock, then the name of the class, and then we need to decide which methods we're gonna bypass and what you would like to happen in their place. So here we're bypassing the write to file method. This is how you do it. And we're just gonna say that instead, what I want you to do is just return true. Okay, so the internals of the method won't actually be executed, but we're just gonna get true returned in its place. I inject mock JSON writer into the random processor constructor and then let's run the tests again. As you can see, much faster, less than a second, 0 0.027. If we go and look at the JSON file writer, you can see here, if this had been executed, it would have printed writing to JSON file, but nothing was printed to the terminal, and this has been completely bypassed. That was only made possible by the use of dependency injection because if we go back to our random processor class i'll show you our scenario if we didn't have dependency injection as you can see we're hard coding the instantiation into here which means that we would have had no choice but to have this execute every time that we ran our tests which just as a reminder would mean all these steps here opening the file for writing, writing to the file, and closing the file with every run of the test. Let's remind ourselves of the goals we set out to achieve at the beginning of this recording. We've avoided hard coding, we have loosely coupled code, our code scales well, it is low maintenance, and it is easy to test. So use dependency injection. Why not reach out to me in the comments and tell me what made you watch this video? Maybe there's something that either myself or my subscribers can help you with. If you got value from what you've watched, then give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. And finally, if you want YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.